Hey writers and readers, if you are interested in attending BookCon either this year or in the future, I'm about to share with you my top tips I wish I knew before attending my first BookCon to help you make the most of your experience. If you don't know what BookCon is, it's basically a fan convention for the book industry that takes place in New York City every year. At this convention, you meet authors, get books signed, attend writerly and book related panels, and get in on tons of upcoming books and tons of book swag. I attended my first book con last year and it was so much fun. I only went for one day this year. I'm going for two. I'm super excited. But if you want to see what that was like, what actually looks like, what I actually did, I did do a vlog all about it, which I'll link below and in the cards. And if you'll be at book con this year and you want to see me, I will definitely be around Mandy Lynn and Bethany Atazada's table, but I'll also be sharing clips of my experience on my Instagram. So if you want to follow me over there, you can definitely stay in the know and we can meet up. But if you're excited about jumping into these tips, let Let's get into it. My first tip is to go in with a plan. There is so much offered at Pecan. I'm telling you right now, you will not be able to do everything. So you really have to make a plan to make sure you hit all the things you really want to hit the most. Before you even do that, you definitely need to get tickets which can sell out. So you wanna get them as early as possible. And you also wanna do this because your tickets typically get mailed to you. If you buy them too close to the event, you're gonna to have to pick them up when you arrive. Speaking of tickets, some people ask, should I go for just one day? Should I go for both? Is going just one day even worth it? I'd say that last year I went for one day. It was totally a full experience and it was really awesome. I think it was worth it, but there were certain book drops and author signings and different panels that happened on the second day that I missed out on. That being said, if you can only do one of the days, I've been told that Saturday is the best day to go. So after I try out going for two days this year, I can definitely do another vlog and update you guys to see if that rumor is true. Now, as far as scheduling your day goes, I have two major tips for that. The first is to get the BookCon app, which literally you can look at everything that is going to be happening, panels, signings, all the stuff. And then you can actually click which ones you're most interested in and it'll create a schedule for you and also give you updates during the day if anything changes. The other thing I would do is definitely follow the book con on Twitter and hit their little notification bell because throughout the day they will also be giving alerts, book drops, all those different kind of things and you can engage with the community both on Twitter but also on the BookCon app in their community section. The other thing you might want is a map of some sorts of the main floor. Last year, I hung out with Mandy Lynn and her friend Ellen a whole lot, and Ellen was super prepared. I'll show you a little clip from the vlog, but basically she had this whole map of the floor plan. If I can figure out where she got it, I will link it in the description below. But she marked out where all the different authors were or different book drops or different things were happening. And she made sure that we were gonna hit those things, which was so helpful. So again, the convention takes place in the Javits Center, so maybe she got it there. I'll take a look. But either way, if you can somehow map out where you wanna go and where you wanna be when, it'll definitely help you out because there is so much to see and it gets pretty crowded in there. So be prepared. Now, my last plan planning tip is about panels and BookCon offers these awesome panels all day and a lot of the times they're offering multiple panels at the same time so you really have to pick and choose and something that I was really helpful somebody said to me before I went to my first BookCon is that you really need to start lining up for the panel about an hour early because the rooms in which the panels take place only hold a certain amount of people so you really need to get in line early enough so that you can actually make it inside and they don't go oh sorry we can't fit you because of all this if you really plan it out I would suggest picking two panels a day and maybe a third or fourth as a backup because if you break down the math Saturday is only eight hours and Sunday is only seven hours so if you're waiting in line for an hour and then the panel is about an hour long and you go to two panels that's four hours out of your eight hour or seven hour day so anyway it's up to you whether you want to be in panels all day or you want to be on the floor all day getting books and signings and seeing the vendors or if you want to do a mix of both I personally want to do a mix of both so I go to two panels and then I spend the rest of the day on the show floor. My next tips are about when to arrive. I was told to arrive at least two hours before it officially opened. Each day they open at 10 so I showed up at 8 and there was already a crazy line. I didn't have to wait outside. I got to go in, get my tickets and then went around the corner and there was already yeah this crazy line ready for when it opened and it just kept getting longer and longer from there. So with this I would say be prepared to wait and just 
all throughout the day, you're going to probably be waiting in lines a lot. So that leads into my next points about what to bring. And the first thing I want to say is bring friends or plan to make friends. Friends just make the whole BookCon experience so much more fun. So I brought my husband and then again, I met up with Mandy Lynn and Ellen and saw a bunch of other author tubers and authors that I know from online. And because of this, while I was waiting in line or making my way to another event, I got to spend time and really chat with friends. This also really helped because again, there are a ton of things that are happening. There are giveaways happening on the show floor as well. And my husband ended up somehow finding all the free stuff while we wait in line sometimes. So that was amazing. I love him so much for going to these kind of things with me. So if you have a husband that is willing to do this kind of stuff with you, definitely bring him. Maybe our husbands can be friends. Actually, my author friend EC Woodham and I were sort of joking that we should make t-shirts for our husbands, like my wife made me come here or something. It'd be so funny. But anyway, my point is if you're strategic and don't mind splitting up and dividing and conquering a little bit, you can actually cover a whole lot more ground with your pals. Another thing I would definitely suggest to bring is a backpack. If you're like anybody else at BookCon, you're going to be getting a lot of books, whether you buy them or you pick up ones for free. And while you could definitely bring a tote or a satchel that hangs on one side, it's really gonna bother your shoulder by the end of the day. So I definitely suggest wearing a backpack, keeping that balanced evenly on your shoulder so you don't have pain at the end of the day. And you'll probably also be able to carry a whole lot more books and those things get heavy. So be nice to your body. Finally, the last few things I would definitely suggest to bring are one, a portable charger or like a charging case for your phone. Basically, if you don't put your phone on airplane mode, you are going to lose battery so fast and you're gonna be really sad by the end of the day. And everybody is trying to charge their phone in all the possible charging stations. So definitely have one that doesn't need to be plugged into the wall in some capacity. Or again, you can put your phone on airplane mode for certain parts of the day as well. But if you put your phone on airplane mode, you'll also maybe miss some alerts from the BookCon app or Twitter. Or if you're trying to meet up with friends, you might miss out on them too. So again, portable chargers are awesome. I would also encourage you to bring snacks and water in that backpack of yours. I'm pretty sure you can still bring those things into the center, but I would definitely check out the Javits Center website to make sure. Does the center have a food court? Yes, it does. But I would suggest bring your own snacks and water. One, because food can just be expensive, especially in a center like that. And two, because everybody's probably going to want snacks and lunch sort of around the same time, which means more waiting in lines, which means less time on the show floor or being in a panel. So what I would suggest is maybe eating those snacks kind of around your lunchtime. And then if you wanna to go to the food court, try to do that at a time that not a lot of people are there so you don't have to spend too much time away from why you really came to book on. And the final thing is cash. I'm so glad that we thought to bring cash, but if you don't, there are certain vendors that only take cash and I wasn't aware of that. So definitely have some cash so you don't miss out on anything. I am definitely planning on doing another book con vlog this year. So again, if you are planning to be there, definitely let me know in the comments below, follow me over on Instagram and you might appear in that vlog. Well guys, I hope these tips helped you. And if you would like more bookish and writerly content, I hope to see you in one of these two videos next.